everyone with another episode of Managing Ubuntu, where I teach you how to do Ubuntu things. And today we are going to learn about inspecting processes. So what is a process? A process is basically just one thing that's running on a computer. For example, a Firefox is usually just one process. That doesn't mean that each program has one process. Sometimes programs like Chrome have multiple processes because Chrome likes to have one process for each tab. But the basic idea is that it's one separate thing that's running on your computer. Okay. So, in order to inspect processes, we're going to open up the terminal. And to list processes, we're going to use the ps command. So here we can see we have the PID. PID stands for process ID, and it's basically the number that we use to identify this process. TTY, we don't really need to worry about. Time stands for CPU time. We don't really need to worry about that either. And CMD tells us the command. So really, what does this process do? So bash tells us that the bash program is basically the terminal. So that's this terminal. This terminal process is PID 2819. And the PS command is, you know, just the PS command we just ran. So P that had a PID of 2832. So that's basically what PS does for us. It just lists processes. So let's say we want to list all of the processes in this computer. Um, to do that, we do PS and then hyphen E. And that basically just lists all of the processes here. So you can see um, we have Firefox, and that's Firefox. Um, Bash, PS, GNOME Terminal, it's kind of related to this terminal. Update Notifier, so it's kind of things you'd expect. Maybe some things you didn't expect, like Zeitgeist. So yeah, things like that. Um, let's say you want to look for a specific type of process. Let's say um, you couldn't see, because this is a lot, bunch of stuff, let's say you didn't see that Firefox was here, and you just wanted to make sure Firefox was here, you can do ps, and then pipe it into grep Firefox. Okay, and that gives you the line with Firefox in it. And But another easier way to do this is the pgrep command, so you do pgrep, and then you can do Firefox. And that just gives you the process ID, so there's not, none of this TTY or time stuff. You just do pgrep Firefox, and it gives you the process ID. Um, you can a, way, a good thing to do is check if there's any, um, maybe security vulnerabilities vulnerabilities running. Maybe you could check Telnet. Telnet is a security vulnerability. Nothing showed up, so that means Telnet is not running. You could check SSH. You could check FTP. And the things you don't want to be running. You could check Kause. Kause is a very dangerous program. You don't want that to be running. Um. So yeah, that's basically it for pgrep. Another thing you can do is that basically, right now we only have the PID, a bunch of stuff we don't care about, and the command. But let's say we want to know more about this command, like sudo. Sudo can be a bunch of different things, because um, sudo just basically runs a command as an admin. So let's say we wanted to know what command this was running. We do ps hyphen e, and then now we add the f option. F stands for full, so it gives us the full output, basically. Okay, so now we have a bunch of things. Basically, to go through this, the first column is the user. What user is running this? It could be root, it could be cool person, that's, that's us. It could be some other user on the computer that's logged in. It could be some system daemon, such as www-user, uh, avahi daemon, lp-admin. And these system daemons, you don't you don't usually see them, because they're not, like, if you go to, like, settings, settings, and you try to look through the users, you won't see them there, because they're not regular users, they're just system daemons that are going back on processes. So if you see any user you don't know, try googling it, and maybe it'll be a system daemon. Okay. Um, and then this next column is the PID. The next column, though, is the parent ID. So as you can see, like, um, basically, you have one process, and that can run another process. So here's an example. We're running Bash. Bash has a PID of 2819, but we also, inside of Bash, we ran PSEF. So PSEF has a parent ID of 2819, which connects it to this Bash um, process. And then the next column is basically the number of children 
Um, we don't really care about that. The next column is the starting time. So like this process started at 3.02 and we ran PSEF at 3.09. We don't really care about that either. Next column is TTY. Next column is CPU time. And next column is the command. But now it's like in full. So it's Zeitgeist. Instead of Zeitgeist hyphen data, it's Zeitgeist hyphen data hub. And as you can see like here, you can see GFVSD hyphen burn. And then there's some arguments. Or if you go to the sudo command, sudo. And instead of just sudo, it's sudo python3 suspicious.py. Dun dun dun. So now, now we know what sudo was actually doing. Okay, so obviously, you know, you want to go through this, make sure there's nothing suspicious. And if there is something suspicious, then you want to do something to it. So clearly, suspicious, right here. So what's the PID for this? 2786. Okay. Um, so... It says that suspicious.py, we want to figure out where that file is. And that file is probably going to be in the working directory of the process. And basically the working directory of the process, how, where in the file system is this process run? Like in our psef command, the working directory would be the working directory of this terminal, which is our home directory. So what is the working directory of this process? In order to figure that out, we type in p wdx, and then we type in the process ID, 2786. So pwdx basically just gives you the working directory. And then it'll say permission denied. That means you need to go on sudo. So sudo pwdx, then 2786. So this will run it as an admin. And type in your password. It won't show up on the screen, but just type it in and press enter. Okay. And... Yeah, so now it tells us that this is the working directory. So we can copy that. Okay, and yeah. So we're going to change to that directory. And now we're in the videos directory, ls, to see what files are here. Um, we see the file 2 and the file suspicious. So let's... What's in the file 2? Nothing is in the file 2. We're going to delete that. And suspicious. What's in this? While 2 pass. So if you don't know Python, you might not know what that means. Um, you can try Googling it. But basically what this is, is that it's an infinite while loop. It does nothing except just take up this process. And takes up CPU time. Look at how much... It took up 4 minutes and 10 seconds of CPU time. It's not... It just does nothing. It's useless. So... Clearly, this is not something we want to be running, so let's delete this suspicious file. And then, um, remember the process ID was 2786, so to um, kill the process, we do kill 2786. And it says operation not permitted, so we do sudo kill 2786. And it doesn't ask us for a password again, because it knows that we can run sudo since we already ran sudo before. So now that process should be killed. And let's go back to our um, home directory. Okay, so now we want to make sure that that process isn't there anymore. So the obvious way to do this is you do PSEF. And then you can do GUP2786. But that's kind of annoying. So we won't, don't, won't do that. Because that's a long command. So instead, there's actually a shortcut way to do this. You do PS space hyphen P. And then hyphen P just makes sure like it searches for a specific a process of a specific ID. So it'll only give you one, it'll, it'll only give you the processes with the PIDs that you list. So we're gonna list 2786. So as you can see, it just showed us a header line and then there's nothing here. So that means this process doesn't exist anymore. Let's just give you an example. Let's say the process did exist. So this process exists, 2819. So if we put in ps-p, 2819, then as an example, it only shows you that process and nothing else. So hyphen P just gives you the option to search for a specific process. So we have hyphen P, hyphen E, hyphen F. Um, if you go back to hyphen F, actually, you'll actually see that some of this is cut off. Like hyphen hyphen spawn, there should be other things there. It's actually not showing the whole thing. So. If we do hyphen EF and to fix this issue, we do WW, and that'll actually show us the whole thing. So yeah, um, we go back here, and now it says spawn, and now we can see 1.11, and then we can just see like this thing. 
So now we see the, like the whole command instead of just part of it. Okay, so that's pretty helpful. Um, so we have process run by root. We have process run by cool person system daemons. Let's say we just want to get all of the root processes since those are the important ones. Um, those are the ones that can do damage because they have root privileges. So we do ps. I'll show you that again. ps hyphen u root. That that's the command. And when we run this, we get all of this. Um, cups. That's like something for printers. Getty. That's like the. That's complicated. Um. So yeah, it's just basically just a bunch of system processes. So yeah, those are all of the processes gone by root. If you see anything suspicious there, you might want to kill it. Um. You you could, although I don't think this is very helpful since we have the pgap command. But you could do ps hyphen c, and let's say you want to search for Firefox. That that just so it searches for all of the all of the processes with a certain command. So if you want to search for all of the processes with the command Firefox, you can do that. All of the processes with the command bash. So in my opinion, you can just use pgap. But if you want to use ps hyphen c, you can do that too. Um. And finally, for the last thing, basically for formatting, I mean for searching, is well, no, that's basically the it for searching processes. Um, but if you want to format processes, you can use the format option. And basically, um, you see how we have tty and time. We don't really need that, so you can just do pid, um, and it'll just list all of the process IDs. Okay, so we have that. And actually, we want to list all of the processes, so we do ps hyphen e. Okay, but let's say we don't. We also want the command. We can do space and then type in orgs, and it'll give us the process ID and the command. Um, let's say we want to know what user is running. We can type in user, and I'll put that at the beginning. Yeah, so it's the user pid and then the command arguments, and basically we just get rid of everything that that was kind of unnecessary. So this is just a lot easier to read. Um, another thing is that you can actually list the, let me go back here, um, pcpu, and that means, like, um, how much percent CPU is this using, and we actually list pmem, so how much percent memory is this using. So if you put that in there, we'll actually have two new columns, this first column is pcpu, and the second column is using, um, is listing pmem. So you can see kind of processes that are using a lot of memory. 19.8%. Huh? That's Firefox. So yeah. So you can kind of see, like, which ones use most memory. Comp is, you know. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. And another thing that's interesting, if we go back here, um, is I'll just get rid of kind of a lot of things. And... The, you can list the parent ID with PPID, but there's also group ID and session ID. So if we go here, and then I'll list the command too. Okay, so um, we have PID, parent ID, group ID. What is a group? A process group is basically just a group of processes that can be signaled kind of together. So like we can just say, this group should stop. So it's kind of what a process group does. It's just kind of a group of processes that, like, yeah, it's it's just a good way of organizing things. And then a session is basically a group of process groups, and it can be used for a bunch of different things. Like this bash, if we go here, you'll see that um, the PID is the same as the session ID. That means that this is w this is the session leader. This process started a session. So whenever you open up a terminal, that starts a session. Because it's kind of like, each command is a process group, and yeah, each process, each command is a process group, and the session is the terminal. And that's kind of like a group of process groups. Um, So yeah, sessions and process groups are pretty interesting. Um, Another thing that you can do is that you, this is pretty interesting but basically you let's say you want to see like um which if you have a command and then a pid um what you want to list the parent id right before it so you can kind of see the tree of how the processes kind of branch off each other you can do hyphen hyphen first and oh 
You want to make sure you have hyphen E. Okay. So you can actually see how, like, yeah. So PS command was run by Bash, which was run by GNOME Terminal, and Firefox, and Zeitgeist, and all of these things. If we keep going up, those were all run by Init, which was run by LightDM, which was run by LightDM. So you can kind of see, like, whoa, there's, like, a lot of... It's, like, a process that was run by 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 a process. So that's pretty cool. In my opinion, at least. So, yeah. So, yeah, basically, if you have a bunch of bad processes, like, maybe you have, I don't know, um, a Python script and a Perl script and a Ruby script that are all suspicious looking and it's all, they all have the same PID, then you can maybe use voice to kind of look and see, like, or you can use hyphen P to see what command that corresponds to that PID. So, and this is just like hyphen P, hyphen um, U, hyphen C. They're all just a bunch of different tools you can use to search and look through processes. processes. Another, this is probably our last tool, but another tool is that you can sort. So, um, let's say you want to sort like by session. So you can sort by SID, and I'll do hyphen E. So we, okay. So these, actually. And we can combine sort and format. So user, PID, and then I'll show you SID. Show that they'll all be grouped together. And then orgs as the command. Okay. So we have process ID, and then the second column is SID. And yeah, as you can see, like right here, by because we sorted by SID, the, this command, this column is just increasing as we go down. So that gives us some interesting things. Like we can see that all of this is one session. So all of this daem, debus daemon and evolution and GVFS and I386, all of that's kind of like one session. And then, um, all of this is one session. We have like GNOME session, Nautilus, and um, applet. So that's pretty interesting. So yeah, you can kind of just go through these and see what w one session is. You can also group it by um, uh, CPU usage. You want to see like which ones use the most CPU? We'll do format equals user, um, and then orgs, and then I'll just list the CPU, and PID, and then PCPU. So yeah, as you see, um, CPU increases as we go down, and then you can see like which ones use the most. Obviously, Compass uses the most here. Firefox and Zorg is up there. So yeah. Um, that's. Basically it for PS. There are other things. You want, might want to look at like the man page, like Google PS man page or something like that. Um, another command that is pretty helpful is top. Um, so yeah, this basically you can monitor things. There's two users. Um, tasks running. M um, memory usage. Swap, um, the swap partition is some, it's basically like this extra partition, so you can see that usage. Um, which one, and then it'll list, it ha I think it has some kind of algorithm using like, based off percent CPU and percent memory to list which ones first. So you can see Zerg, Compass, GNOME Terminal, VM Tools. So yeah, you can kind of see like which ones use the most CPU. So that's pretty interesting. And then if you want to quit top, you want to run other commands and you're done with top, type in Q. And then once you type Q, it'll stop. Um, and a last command for this video is actually HTOP. So um, HTOP is not enabled by default. You want to do sudo space apt hyphen get space install space HTOP. And then, yeah, I already have it installed. But if you don't have it installed, that should um, ask you, do you want to install this? Press Y, press enter, and then... It'll, it'll install. Once you've installed it, press um, enter HTOP. And then this is basically more in depth. So um, in top, you could only see like the top commands. Here, it's still sorted by percent CPU. Now you can go actually go down. So we use the arrow keys to go down. And we can lo look at other commands. And you can see CPU usage, memory usage, swap usage still. Yeah, and then you can go down. Um, as you can see, this one goes off the screen, actually. So we use the left and right arrow keys, I believe. Yes, so left and right arrow keys to see, like, 
Oh, now we can see the rest of that command. Okay. Um, yes. And let's say um, you want to um, kill a certain command. You want to kill Firefox. Firefox isn't responding for some reason. So you type in F3. And then, oh uh, yeah. F3. And then type in Firefox. Okay, so now we have this line highlighted. There's actually two Firefoxes. Yeah, there's two Firefoxes for some reason. Um, so we can kill these. So let's say we want to kill the first one. Um, kill is F9. So we type in F9. And then do we want to send the signal? Press enter. Yes. So then we closed Firefox. See that? Is there any other Firefox? No, because if we search Firefox, it's no longer there. So yeah, this is pretty interesting. You don't... Yeah. Okay, so now, like, you can kill things, you can search things, you can, um, actually, if you want to do the first thing, yeah, this shows you the tree. So it shows you, like, the tree of processes that is branching off each other. So you can do, like, the first thing, you can, um, sort things. Um, F6 is sort, I will, yeah. So you can sort things, let's say you want to sort it by P, um, user. Yeah. So now you can see, over here, all the commands run by user. So you can do all of these things, and you don't need to remember all of the options for PS. You can just actually do it all in HTOP. Um, it can be kind of, like, weird, because it's, like, it's like you're using a very complex program in the terminal, which you might not be used to, but it's, HTOP, in my opinion, is pretty useful. So yeah. Um, you could use PS if you want to still use PS, or you can use HTOP. Or maybe you... I don't know. Actually, I don't think you can kill, kill processes with top. But yeah. So, ho I hope, hopefully, and then, if you want to exit each top, click F10. Okay. Uh, so hopefully, um, that gave you a bunch of different tools you can use to manage and inspect processes. If you have any other tips and tools um, that you think you can use, maybe some more options for PS or different things you can do with HTOP, leave them down in the comments below. I'd really appreciate that. And yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And yeah, I hope you like this video, and have fun managing Ubuntu!